Hello, we are going to talk about the commit command in Juniper and Juno's OS, and this is for the Gencia uh, certification. And what is the commit? Right, there is actually two parts. Um, whenever you commit, or before you commit, is basically the candidate configuration, and after you commit, it becomes the active. So saving the candidate configuration into the active configuration. Um, the candidate is what has been changed. So whenever you change something um, before you commit, it is called the candidate configuration. And after you commit, it becomes the active configuration. The active configuration is what is actually running on the device. And there is different options that you can use um, in combination with the commit um, command. Um, the first one is none, so if you don't put anything after commit, it just executes the commit command without any options to commit the configuration changes um, to the configuration database. And then we have the activate, uh, so you can use the commit, the commit activate, which is optional. And this completes um, commit in, in, in two steps of preparing the configuration for commit and later activation or, or, and later activating the configuration is optional. You need to remember that. Um, then we have the commit and quit, which is also optional. Um, the, and what this does is uh, the commit configuration, uh, commit the configuration, and if the configuration contains no errors and the commit su succeeds, um, it's going to exit from the configuration mode. So that's what it does with commit and quit. Um, commit add a, and you add a string. This is also optional. And this um, save software configuration changes and activate the configuration at a future time upon reboot. Okay, so this is what it does. It just um, save the software configuration and then it's going to activate it at a later time, whatever time you specify. And then we have the commit check, which is also optional. And this one just verify the syntax of the configuration, but do not activate it. It just makes sure that whatever you configure is good. And if it passes, it tells you that it is good, but it doesn't actually activate it. It still say it stays as the candidate configuration. So let's go ahead and take a look at those um, options. Right now I have two VSRX, VSRX1 and VSRX2, which are two um, Juniper firewalls. So the way that you commit is you first want to configure something. So let's go ahead and configure um, this interface right here, GE 0 slash 0 slash 1, with this IP address is 172.16.1.1. So if you do a set um, interfaces and you go into the interface GE 0 slash 0 slash 1, and what you want to do after that, you do a unit 0 to configure the logical interface 0. Then you want to do family address of family in it for IPv4. Then you want to add the address. And then after that, you want to do 172.16.1.1 slash 24. Enter. As you can see right now, um, if you take a look at your show, um, at your show configuration. So if you do a edit or edit interfaces, you do a show command. You can see um, what what this is showing you right now it is showing you the candidate configuration and it hasn't been pushed yet so if i try to ping this linux right now we won't be able to ping it because this one is still the candidate configuration and the way that you can in the way that you can have this activated is by doing the commit And that's going to activate your configuration. So now that it's completed. So now this um, command that we enter, um, this one right here, it is now in the active configuration or in the running configuration if you want to call it like that too. Okay, so that's how you do it. Also, if you want to just verify the syntax of the configuration but do not activate it, uh, let's go ahead and, um, and configure something. Let's go ahead and go to the top, edit security zones so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow pin on this interface GE 0 slash 0 slash 1 um, security zone trust we are first going to add this interface to the trust zone so we're going to set interfaces 
ge zero um zero slash zero zero slash one we are going to do a host inbound system and let's allow ping right so if you want to check the syntax of the configuration making sure that it is correct and it's not going to give you an error you can do a commit check and what this is going to do is going to um, see if the configuration is good and if it is good it is not going to activate it so to activate it you need to do a commit and that's going to push it into the active configuration all right so that is good so now I should be able to do a run ping 172.16.1.2 that 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 and that should let me ping if it is working so GE do I have this one configured let me verify that my Linux device has an that as a IP address of 172.16.1.2 let's go ahead and go into system tools I have config and it looks like it doesn't have we don't have anything configured right here so let's go ahead and go start up config it looks like it was set up but for some reason it's not working so we can just go ahead and so let me go ahead and put this down put this down let me go ahead and shut turn it off there we go now let's go ahead and go into the solder configs it's not it's actually Linux 4 so Linux 4 Oh, it was off, so I need to just turn it on, save it. It was Linux 4. Let's go ahead and start. And after it starts, oh, I configure it in the oh, that's what it was. So I configure, <laughs> I configure on VSRX2. So this IP address actually needs to be 172.16.2.1. So let's go ahead and end. what we could do. We can go ahead and go to top. We can go ahead and go to edit interfaces. We can do a show. What we could do is we can just replace um, GE or actually replace pattern. Let me see, replace. Uh, let's just do a let's just go ahead and just delete it ge slash one show okay and then we can just go ahead and set interface set not interface set ge i'm just getting used to this unit zero family init address 172.16.2.1 that one slash 24 commit my changes run thing 172.16.2.2 and there we go so I'm able to pin now my Cisco router I just configured the incorrect IP address because I thought I was used I thought I was on VSRX1 but I wasn't but I am in VSRX2 so as you can see after I commit I was able to ping because I push everything to the active configuration um, so another thing that you could do if you want to just go ahead and set uh, let's go ahead and set another IP address let's say 2.3 and then we can do a show As you can see that we have two um, addresses right now um, so what we could do is commit and quit so commit and quit what it does is it saves the software configuration changes and activate the configuration and then what it does is that um, it come it actually not saves it. It commits the configuration, and if the configuration contains no errors and the commit succeeds, it's going to exit from the configuration mode. So it's going to take you out out of the configuration mode. So you can see commit and quit. So after it succeeds, it is going to take you out of the configuration mode. There you go. It took you out. So if you want to go back to the configuration, 
um, and if you let's go ahead and go into edit interfaces again we can add another interface so we can keep doing more um, commit commands you can do a commit um, you can do a commit and activate and what this does is it is just going to basically save the configuration changes and activate the configuration at a future time or open reboot so it depends on what you want to do so this is how um, the commit works in Juniper and, uh, or Juno's OS um, so we took a look at the commit activate commit and quit and commit and check so hopefully you guys enjoy this video and if you guys enjoy this video like always go ahead and follow me on Twitter at ctna.tips thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one guys bye bye